bird watching can be very rewarding, and it's the fastest growing pastime, according to some people. There are plenty of gulls for these boys to watch, but notice where they're pointing their binoculars. They're checking out the white pelicans. There are plenty of birds here for watching. The binoculars are pointed toward the seagulls, but another white pelican glides in, stealing the show. Other birds are flying around as well. It takes some skill to adjust binoculars for a focused view, but the results are well worth the effort. The kids were at the edge of the water, right where some of the most interesting birds are found. One type of bird that's encountered near water is the cormorant. Cormorants are graceful flyers when skimming the water like this one on the Columbia River, but they also move well underwater where they dive for fish, eels, and water snakes. Cormorants are found near water for obvious reasons, considering their diet, but they're only found in coastal and inland waterways. They build communal nests in such places, much like herons. Here we see a cormorant carrying a stick with which to build or add to a nest. Even when not nesting, it's not unusual to see cormorants grouped together. The ancestors of cormorants date back to the days when dinosaurs lived on Earth. The earliest known modern bird had the body structure of a cormorant. If you're around a body of water long enough, you're likely to see a cormorant, and they're easy to identify by the behavior you see here. Cormorants spread their wings like this to dry their feathers, especially after a dive into the water to catch a meal. Cormorants are not the only birds diving into the water for fish. These arctic terns make dramatic dives when the payoff is food. They may not dive as deep as a cormorant, but they sure put on quite a show when they're in a feeding frenzy like these terns. These scoters are only one of two species of birds with completely white bills. They're examples of waterfowl, and they are built similar to coots, only slightly larger. Scoters are often found in open water. I saw these in the Pacific Ocean at the Oregon coast. I saw others in the Salish Sea near the San Juan Islands. On both occasions, the scoters were close to shore, like this rocky shore in Oregon. The beach is where you can find marine birds and shore birds together. Some spend their days out to sea, diving for food, then retire to the beach at the end of the day. These birds at Cannon Beach in Oregon gather at dusk. The long, stilty legs and very skinny, long beak equip these shorebirds for their habitat. As noted in a previous episode, birds, especially a diversity of bird species, tells us a great deal about the health of the environment. Scientists use data about bird populations in their studies of the ecosystem. Other people watch them for the sheer joy of it. With so many birds out during the day, there's no reason to miss out on the avian life that surrounds us. With little effort and a pair of binoculars, we can observe and learn about these animals on the wing. Like these children, you don't have to be an expert on birds to enjoy watching them.